Jupy SQL is a SQL client for Jupyter Notebooks that lets you run SQL and plot large data sets. We're going to do a crash course in the next five minutes. Let's go. We're going to be using this Kaggle Movies data set that contains 45,000 movies and 26 million ratings. Let's come over to our Jupyter Notebook. Now, the first thing we're going to do is load the Jupyter SQL extension. This will make available what they call magics that we can use in the rest of the notebook. And the magics come in two flavors. So we've got ones which start with just one percentage, and those are called line magics, and ones which start with two percentages, and those are called cell magics. The first ones we're going to use are percentage SQL and percentage percentage SQL, which we can use to connect to databases and for running queries. Now, one of those databases that we connect to is, of course, DuckDB. So we're going to be using DuckDB and we're going to create a connection and we'll call it movies.duck.db. Once we've done that, we're going to use the cell uh, magic to create or replace a table called movies. And we're going to read from the CSV file that we downloaded from Kaggle. Give that a second. And there we go. We've got 45,000 movies loaded. Now let's do the same thing, but for the ratings, and we'll create a table called ratings and reading from the ratings CSV file. That'll take a little bit longer, but give it a few seconds and we've got those records loaded. We also have a percentage SQL CMD or command for listing tables and columns. So let's have a look at that. So we can call SQL command tables and you can see it says movies and ratings. We can also call it uh, to say get columns and then pass in the name of a table. And so you can see there we get back the, the names of the, the columns that we have in this table. So we've got ID, we've got homepage, we've got the IMD, IMDB ID even. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see we've got the revenue and we've got runtime and we've got a bunch of other columns as well. We can also use that SQL magic to run SQL queries. So for example, we can say, hey, I want to get the title, the revenue and the release date from the movies and order it by the revenue, so i.e. show me the highest grossing films. And you can see we get back Avatar, Star Wars, Titanic, Avengers, and so on. And those are sort of what you'd expect. You can also do parameterized queries. So here we can specify just some Python values. So you can say, hey, I'm going to get the columns, the limit, and the order by. And then we can then call the, the single line um, SQL magic and say, hey, I want to select those columns from the movie, order by the order by column uh, descending and get me the number by that limit. And you can see we get back exactly the same results. Where I found this really quite useful was when you're using numbers. So you can, in Python, for example, if I wanted to say, hey, the, the number 50 million, I can specify 50 underscore 000 underscore 000. We can call that our revenue. And we can then pass that in to the query to say, hey, get me the films that, gr that grossed less than 50 million. And so we can see some of those. If you had to do that in SQL, you'd have to do it like just with 50 and, and then the six zeros and it's a little bit harder to read and sometimes you can't quite tell what the number is. So I think this is quite a neat feature. We can also do visualizations and at the moment that's restricted to histograms and box plots. Let's start with histograms. So we can say, hey, SQL plot. I want to create a histogram on movies for the revenue. And you can see there's a very, very long tail, right? Most of the movies are making no money at all. So it's zero and then you can barely see like as it moves across. So I think on the far, far right hand side would be three, $3 billion. And most of the values are actually zero. So maybe we can create another uh, plot where we take out some of those lower earning movies. And so this uh, is possible with something called saved queries. So what we can do is we can say, I want to use that a percentage, percentage equal. I'm going to save whatever my query is as movie revenue filtered. And then we're also going to tell it not to bother executing it. So we'll say no execute. And then we're going to write the query. So we're going to get the title, the revenue from the movies. And then we're going to say, I want to get the revenue where it's bigger than the 90th percentile. And then we'll order it by the revenue. And now we're going to go to our next cell and we're going to do another history. And this time we need to say, hey, with that, that saved query with movie revenue filtered, again, pass in the table name movie revenue filtered, and then again, the, the column revenue. And again, it's still like a massive, um, a massive long tail, but you can start to see if you really squint, you can kind of see some of the, some of the values around the sort of 1 billion mark. We can also create box plots. So let's have a look at one. So we'll, this time we'll use a different column. So we're going to create the box plot on movies and this time we'll do it on runtime. And you can see that's a big, big range like of those, of those movies. So there are some very, very short movies, but some very, very long ones. I certainly don't have the patience for a 1200 minute movie. But again, we can, we can sort of narrow this in. So we'll do it from both sides this time. So we're going to create a new saved query called movies average. Uh, we'll select stuff from movies where the runtime is between the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile. So that should get us everything in the middle. And if we redo our bar plot, uh, pointing it at that movie's average saved table, then you can see like most of them are sort of sitting in this range, like from about just under an hour to up to 
uh, over two hours and, and in the middle we're at like a kind of more comfortable time now of just over one and a half hours uh, and so that's it uh, give GP SQL uh, a try and if you have any questions let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one